Greetings and welcome to episode 3 of Morrowind Modding Showcases. I'm your host, Doc Yevkoy, and I'll be your narrator this evening as we embark on a number of mod showcases. Before we begin, I should mention the improvements made since last time. We've mostly fixed the frame rate issues that plagued episode 2, though for some of the mods we're showing, this meant decreasing overall movement. In addition, the interactive menus are back, but we've made a few changes here. Instead of over a dozen menus, we have three now, and there will be an annotation in the upper left hand corner of each showcase so you can go back to the main menu at any time. The reason for this is that doing well over 140 plus annotations for 12 menus like we did last time just takes way too long, and three menus is more efficient. Anyway, with that said, the download links for the mods shown are included in the description below. Now let's begin with our popular mod of the week. This week we have Better Landscape Stonewood Pass by Magic Window. What this mod does is to completely rebuild the path from Balmora to Caldera, making it vastly more interesting and atmospheric. Now you'll find waterfalls, creaky bridges, and ravines as you travel from one city to another. The trail from Balmora now offers spectacular views a mountainous climb and hidden secret paths from which to branch off of. The road between these two fine cities has never been more beautiful, breathtaking, or exciting. For our building mod of the week, we have Census and Excise Office Quarters by Sea Lyle. This mod adds quarters for the guards to see the need to live in, as they previously had nowhere else to sleep. A pleasant immersion addition, the mod also has some particularly useful features in the way of a smith that can repair armor and weapons and who also carries a few things to sell. Before, players had to trek all the way to Balmora for repairs, so this is very convenient. I should also mention that Sea Loyal's newest mod, Imperial Presence, includes this mod as part of its package. Our gameplay mod of the week this week is Atmospheric Plazas by Holotrith. This mod simply makes the interior plazas of Avex Cantons a part of the outside world. Now you can catch the morning rays through the Canton windows every day. Not to mention enjoying the sun setting while watching a game or two at the arena. Moving on to our Dungeon Mod of the Week, we have Dark Brotherhood Headquarters by Vrolik. If 
Before this mod is installed, the Zork Brotherhood in Mournhold is fairly generic, with few, if any, unique names for its members. And indeed, the Dark Brotherhood's home had few comforts, and the members were lucky to get anything, much less something to sleep on. The most luxurious item you might be able to find before was just a bedroll like this one here. What this mod does is give each member of the Dark Brotherhood a unique name. So when you're killing them, at least they won't be named the Strangers anymore. This mod also adds a few of the comforts of an actual Dark Brotherhood base. In addition to the banner of the Black Hand that you'll find everywhere, members now have a place to eat, and more importantly, real beds to sleep in. This mod certainly makes the Dark Brotherhood more realistic and adds nicely to immersion. This week's items mod of the week is MLG Ender's Nerevar's Armor. This mod adds a secret chamber to Vivek, containing a new set of armor, but before you can get to it, you have to go through a rather high level boss fight. Once your opponents are defeated, you can grab your prize, a full set of Indoro style armor, complete with a moon and star shield. The armor has the same rating as Daedric, and alternators won't try and kill you because of it. Not to mention it does look quite striking. For our quest mod of the week, we have Pluto's The Sable Dragon. The Sable Dragon adds a new tavern along the road to Hala Ode. Inside, you'll find that the tavern is rather lavishly furnished with cool and interesting new items, as well as a wide variety of unique characters for you to meet. Many of these characters have quests to give you, and you'll never lack for things to do at the Sable Dragon. In addition, each character has a story to tell, and every NPC has a unique background. you 
Do I even meet a few zany characters? What's in them here? Oh, he ain't locks the fish. There's also a number of new dungeons that you'll get to explore, which include a number of new opponents, as well as a number of secrets for you to discover. Now these dungeons range from relatively large to moderately small, depending on the quest they're related to. You'll even get to go to some rather unique locales, like this western style crypt here. Remember to always keep your eyes out in this sable dragon, as is so there's plenty to see and do, but also quite a lot to miss, and you'll find an online guide in the description down below for help in solving quests. This week's Landmass Mod of the Week is none other than Wormhaven by Neoptolemus. Wormhaven is a rather decent sized island west of Solstein that contains a large trading port. The city contains a number of interesting locales, like this pub here. It even has a crazy dancing fellow. Really enjoying himself, isn't he? There's also a marketplace with a number of stalls and shops to choose from. You'll find pleasant looking bakeries, where you can get a bit to eat if you're feeling peckish. You'll also find a bookshop with a rather in-depth collection of books to choose from. Including books from Daggerfall. as well as a few new books added in just for Wormhaven. The city is fairly large, so there's plenty for you to see and do. You'll also find the Order of Kinnereth here, a new faction with a number of quests to complete. You'll be able to join the loyal knights and ladies of the Goddess of the Winds, who act as her faithful servants. The 
these quests start out simply enough, as the order uses you for basic errands. But you'll quickly find yourself mixed in with far more exciting tasks, like murder? The island is a beautiful place to visit, filled with landmarks, interesting terrain, and several old ruins. The terrain varies significantly starting out with flat round, flatlands around the city and continuing on into forests and mountains as you go further inland. You'll find a few new dungeons here and there, which include new opponents to face, as well as a ton of new loot to find. You'll find all of this and much more in the Optolemus' superb landmass mod, Wormhaven. For our NPC mod of the week, we have the Hostiles, by Trevor Demented. This mod adds a ton of new randomly generated hostile NPCs to the world. Sometimes you'll find them in groups, like here. And other times you'll find them off by themselves. They'll often drop a bit of good loot, as well. You can find them frequently near dungeon entrances, and as you become higher level, the likelihood of running into more challenging opponents grows. You can also find them in various smuggler caves, creating more enemies for you to fight. In total, there are over 3,000 different variations of hostile NPCs you can encounter, and it's recommended you use Rhymash for merging leveled lists, and you can find a link to that below.
Not to mention, you can also find these hostile NPCs in ruins. It's like running into another adventure. Our new model's resource mod of the week is Melkor's Imperial Greats resource. As the name implies, this aren't oblivion style Imperial Greats that you can use in your own mods. I'll see you yourself in the included example mod. These greats can be used for a variety of things, including as wells. But don't expect to be able to get out of them very easily. Whether you're using them for wells, drains, or something else, the Imperial Great Resource can come quite in handy for your own projects. For our underrated mod of the week, we have Arcane Archery by Carpig777. This mod adds a new archery academy to Sandrith Mora that specialises in enchanting arrows. You can join the school as a new faction and train underneath a number of skill trainers. There is also a rather extensive history of the school, available for those interested in the lore of the Academy. Once you are sufficiently skilled, you can buy imbuing spells from the school masters. These allow you to imbue, or rather summon, Enchanted arrows with particular effects to your inventory. Very handy if you run out of arrows in the middle of a fight. This week's Blast from the Past is the Balmore Expansion by Gorg, Canadian Ice, and Jeremy. The Balmora Expansion does much what you might imagine it does. It doubles the size of Balmora with new districts, new things to see and do, and no, there's absolutely no way this isn't going to lag a lot regardless of what your graphics settings are at. I do apologise. Normally we would just do a quick overview of the exterior to show all the new things added by this mod. But uh, due to the extremely low FPS count, I believe it's at 9 right here, uh, we're just doing a very slow head swiveling to show off every new district that has been added to Balmora. In truth, the Balmora expansion is more of a mod compilation pack, including dozens of mods from the Balmora area, such as Dave Humphrey's furniture store, which we covered in last week's Blast from the Past. 
It also adds new locales, such as this tavern here. It even has a teleport service. That will actually follow you to a new location. You'll also find a large shopping plaza with a number of stores to visit. There's a magic shop, but you can buy pretty much everything magically related. Such as enchanted items. Potions and other alchem alchemical goods. Spells and spell making. And of course, even more enchanted goods. You can even find a music shop with a variety of instruments for sale. Not to mention there's a number of cafes and restaurants you can visit as well. The Bomora Temple is now in the middle of a weapons market, but you can find something for just about every playstyle. You can also take a bath at the new bathhouse, though this could lead to some potentially awkward conversations. And yes, what spot more expansion could possibly be complete without a red light district? Which includes much what you might expect, including a rather nice view of the city. Though, this view will still cause quite a bit of lag as you can see here. Finally. There's the House of Oddities, which includes a number of strange things to see, such as a armless fellow. And a talking gar. I apologize, I should have pronounced that gwar. But he also sings. Once again, we have a bonus mod of the week. And this week it's Thunder's Saran Waterfront. This mod expands and adds a lot to the waterfront of Saran, as you can see here. Including a new tavern. Which is run by a Nord with a number of new brews to buy. 
as well as some unique dialogue. There's also new travel services to Malag Mall, Plagiad, Vivek, and the Mud Crab Merchant. You can also find a new mill. you can buy virgin oil and several kinds of bread as well as get some training from the proprietor. There's a vacation house as well that you can rent from the Nord Tavern Keeper that has all the comforts of home. It even has a nice roof nest for you to relax in, though it is a little hot on FPS. There's also a few odd vendors here and there, such as this one. He'll sell you some deep fried crab meat. Finally, this mod also adds a boat service to Saran in Plagiad. That concludes our episode for this week. You can find down the links to all the mods mentioned here, as well as the background music in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe, and also do please give us your suggestions for future episodes. I'll be in Seattle on holiday next week, so episode 4 has already been filmed, but with any luck we'll still be able to get it out on time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next week.